it, it took a while to get to that point where enough was enough. Um, what happened, to, I, I came home one night from work spraying for cockroaches. And um, long story short, I turned on the, the um, Discovery Channel. I saw some guys going through Navy SEAL training. And they were going through Hell Week and they were getting their ass just beat. You know, in and out of the water, guys ringing the bell. Um, they were suffering. And I was weighing like 297 pounds. And I had to make a change in my life. I wasn't going anywhere. And I was exactly what everybody said I was gonna be, which was nothing. I came from a horrible background. I got called nigger every day of my life growing up, um, lived in a small town. The Klan headquarters at that time was about um, 20 minutes from where I lived. The, uh, one of the high ups in the KKK, son, sat behind me in two classes. So he called me nigger all the time. I got my first car. They spray printed nigger, we're gonna kill you on it. So I was just an insecure, scared kid. And the only way I could find myself was to put myself through the worst thing possible. One time this, this person drew a picture of me and you know, said, we're gonna kill you nigger on my Spanish notebook. And I took it to my principal. And my principal said, they spelled nigger Niger. That was the best advice he can give me. So long story short, what I realized was no one was here to help me. And the feeling I had every morning, I started shaving my head when I was 16 years old. And the feeling I had every morning, I looked in the mirror, was horrible. And I didn't want to feel like that anymore. And how I felt was a, a kid going nowhere, a kid that was scared. And most kids will accept that and look for help. But the best thing that happened to me, no one helped me. No one felt sorry for me. I had to figure out I wasn't going to be a punk kid all my life. So the only way I could turn it around was to suffer. I had to build calluses in my brain the same way I built calluses on my hands. So I broke the Ginsburg Rolls record for pull-ups a long time ago, but I failed at it twice. And I did 67,000 pull-ups <laughs> in trying to break this record. So to do 4,030 pull-ups, I had to do 67,000 for training for that. Wow. And so what I realized is for me to become the man I wanted to become, I saw myself as the weakest person God ever created. But I never blamed God for anything he did to me. So I wanted to change that to be the hardest man ever created. Am I that? I don't know, but you had to have a goal. And my goal when I was sitting there, not going to school, being bullied, being, having no self-esteem, my goal was the only person that's going to turn this person around is me. The only way I can turn it around is put myself through the worst things possible a human being can ever endure. And that'd be the only way that I can build this brain to handle anything that comes in front of it, callousing my mind right. through pain and suffering. But what I find so interesting is how we, as a species, run from pain, we run from suffering. I firmly believe that you need something that is brutal, is difficult, is hardship, it knocks you off center, it makes you feel bad because in the process of rebuilding and clawing back from that, climbing up, then you can become something. But you, unless you've been tested, unless you've gone through the ringer, you've got no hope. So how do you take somebody that you love and force them through that? Because I'm going to say the exact opposite of what the world, today's world is saying. So we read a bunch of books nowadays. As, as humans, we, we want to find out how to be someone else. What we don't do is we don't go inside. So literally turn yourself inside out. Read the book that's in, like, like we're writing a book every day of our lives, but we never read that book. You have to look inside of yourself to see what you really want. What, what are you passionate about? We use these words and these little phrases of only the strong survive and all this other crap. They're all just fucking words. I get so tired of hearing people just talking. Like right now, someone may think Goggins is just talking. <laughs> you don't know me. So when I speak, I speak from passion, I speak from experience, I, I, I speak from suffering. The only way I believe, and this is, this is my experience in life, the only way you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is you have got to suffer to grow. To grow, you must suffer. And some people will get it and some people won't. But they have to see what their journey is to start their journey. Several people live to be 100 years old and they have great lives and they have great kids. Their kids go to college and all sorts of stuff. But somewhere in their life, 
There was a point where they had a decision to make. They can go left or right on this path. Left was the easy route. Right was the hard route. A lot of people take the easy route. And they had a good life that way, but the better life was going to the right side. And you may have 20 years of pain and suffering to get past it, but a lot of us die never truly starting our journey. You gotta start your journey, it may suck, but it will, it will come out the other side where you're coasting. Every day, we're seeing who we are as people. When I was growing up, I, I lied for people to accept me because I didn't accept myself. So I would make up stories so, so then you would accept me into your world. I would, uh, everything I did was for someone else to like me. It wasn't until I started reading my own book about how pathetic I was as a human being. I could blame my dad, I can blame kids at school, I could blame having health issues, ADD, my mom not being around. I could blame a lot of people. And that's the book I was reading. And I put it off on everybody else. It wasn't until I said, you know what, for me to fix this, I gotta read what the hell, what the fuck is wrong with David Goggins. Not, not blame anybody. Read my book and say, okay, I'm afraid of my shadow. How can I overcome that? Go in the military, get your ass kicked, do things you hate to do. Be uncomfortable every fucking day of your life. Roger that. I'm not the smartest kid in the world. Okay. Instead of somebody saying, oh no, you're smart. No, no, don't say that to yourself. I said to myself, no, I'm a dumb motherfucker. Okay, roger that. How you get smarter? Educate yourself. So the things that we run from, we run from the truth. We're running from the truth, man. So the only way I became successful was going towards the truth. As painful and as brutal as it is, it changed me. It, it allowed me to become, in my own right, who I am today. I knew nothing about ultra marathons. I hadn't even run a marathon. I knew nothing about this world. So I Googled the, you know, the top 10 hardest races in the world. And what comes up is a bad water 135. It's a 135 mile race through Death Valley in the summertime. I thought it was a race where you run like 20 miles, set up camp, you know, barbecue outside, and then go run some more the next day. So I called the race director up at the race and said, hey Chris, his name is Chris Costin, I want to do your race. I hadn't put running shoes on in over a year. I was a big time power lifter, I lifted weights heavy, that's what I did. I just got back home from Iraq. We went straight to free fall school, and then this happened. So I called Chris Costin up on a Wednesday. He says, look man, the only way you can qualify for my race is to run 100 miles at one time in 24 hours or less. And he said, if you qualify by running 100 miles or less in 24 hours, I will consider you my race. I'm gonna cut to the chase. I signed up for this race, it's called the San Diego One Day, where you run around a one mile track for 24 hours to see many miles you can get. My goal was 100 miles. So um, I got to mile 70 and I cleared 70 miles in like 12, 13 hours pretty quickly. But I was done. My feet were broken. I was stretch fractures, shin splints, muscles were tearing. I was in bad shape. I was eating rich crackers and drinking mild <laughs> plants. That's all I had. No water, didn't know what the hell I was doing out there. So I sat down at mile 70 and at this time I was married. And I, I look at my wife and I was like, uh, I'm, I'm messed up bad. So I literally start to turn white. Here I am, I'm all fucked up in this chair. I'm at mile 70, I got 30 fucking miles to go. I'm jacked up. I gotta go to the bathroom. And the bathroom's like 20 feet from me, it's a porta potty. I can't get out of the fucking chair. So I'm peeing blood down my leg. Whoa. Pooping up my fucking pack. And I got 30 miles to go. And I'm, I can't stand up because my, my blood pressure is all messed up. I've been in three hell weeks, ranger school, overcome so many obstacles in my life. This last 30 miles of this race is when I realized a human being is not so human anymore. We have the ability to go in such a space if you're willing to suffer and I mean suffer, your brain and your body, once connected together, can do anything. And this 30 miles was the life-changing moment. I was out of it. I was in the worst pain in my entire life. I was, to me, on the brink of death. And I was able to chunk this 30 damn miles 
into small pieces. I was so driven, and I'm not, not going to say motivated because motivation is crap. Motivation comes and goes. When you're driven, whatever's in front of you will get destroyed. So I sat in this chair and I was so driven to succeed in this race. And, it, and at this time, everybody goes, were you thinking about the guys that died? And I'm not going to lie to you, I wasn't. This became a personal thing. This became me against this race, me against the kids that called me nigger, me against me. It, it, it just became something that I took so, so violently personal. And I broke this thing down into small pieces. I said, okay, I gotta get nutrition. I gotta be able to stand up before I can get off this curb and get off this chair and be able to go 30 miles. So I went through all these small steps and I, I was able to stand up. And then from standing up, I was literally walking around with my wife at the time and she goes, you're not gonna make the time. She goes, you're running, I mean, you're, you're walking like 30 something miles. I got to mile 81. And the second she said that I'm not gonna make the time, I ran the last 19 miles nonstop. I had to put compression tape on my Whoa. ankle. And I had, so this was years ago. I had literally the size of half dollars. I had to get compression tape. And I taped up my ankles and I taped up my feet, and that's how I got through that race. Like my shins hurt so bad from having stress fractures that the only way I could continue on was I taped it so I wasn't doing the flexor motion that, that activates your, your shins. So I taped my ankles and my shins up, and I got that from, because in my third hell week, they weren't gonna let me go back through you know, training anymore. Right. So I literally went through all of Bud's, my last SEAL training, was stretch fracture and shin splints. And how I did it was I would take my ankles all the way up to my calf every morning. So for the first hour, the pain was excruciating. Mm -hmm. But what happened is my feet were good enough. And I did that every single day for six months. People may listen to this and say, this guy is sadistic, he's crazy. He's... No, if you know how I came up, you realize I was just a scared kid that found drive and passion to do something much better than what he thought he was. That's all it is. My biggest advice to get everybody in the world is like I say, we live in an external world. Everything is, is you gotta see it, touch it, it's, it's, it's external. If you can for the rest of your life live inside of yourself, stop listening to people who are calling you fat, gay, transsexual, nigger, everything that is makes no sense. All these insecure people putting their insecurities on you, you gotta flush it out. You gotta just be whoever the hell God or whatever the hell you believe in. If you believe in nothing but yourself, I don't care what it is. You gotta take everything and throw it away. You have to believe in one thing and that is yourself. And, and I'm not saying don't believe in God or what you believe in, but right now for you to find greatness in yourself, you're not gonna find it by looking in a book or by even hearing me. I may give you the spark, but you've got to go inside yourself to find it. And that means you gotta be quiet. Shut the fuck up, go in a room, stop talking, search your soul, search your mind, search your abilities, and you'll find it. But if you're not looking for it, you won't find it. So you gotta go start your journey. And the journey starts with you finding, why the hell am I here on this planet Earth? Why am I here? If you don't know that, you will live the rest of your life searching, always asking the question, why? Cookie jar is something that I've made up of all the failures of my life, all the things that I was, I failed and I went back, I failed and I went back and I finally succeeded. All the things that kicked my ass, I put them all in the cookie jar because at times of hell, even the hardest men, in times of suffering, what we do is we forget how hard we really are. Because that's what suffering is. Suffering is a test, that's all it is. Suffering is the true test of life. And so that cookie jar travels in my brain, so whenever I get put in a situation where I have poopy pants, the woe is me mentality of, oh my God, life sucks, I take a second, I take the one second decision, I step out of my life for one second, go in the cookie jar, pull up, oh, motherfucker, you, went, you were in three hell weeks and finished two. One of those hell weeks a guy died in because it was so bad. Oh, you are a motherfucking badass. I put it back in the cookie jar and I remember 
who the fuck I really am. I'm not the kid that, got, that was called nigga. I'm not the scared kid. This is who I am. It's a reminder of who you truly are at the core of yourself. But what I was saying to myself the whole time on that track, and, it, and this is what I say to myself, self-talk and visualization are the two keys to my success. I believed for that last time, 19 miles, I was indestructible. Because I took myself in that chair, crapping up my back, peeing blood down my leg, shin splint stress fractures. I use all that for motivation versus negativity. I use it for motivation. I, I said to myself, who on this fucking earth would still be going right now? You are. You are. You gotta be the hardest motherfucker on the planet. Is it true? I don't give a fuck. At that time, it got me to the finish line of that fucking race. I believed it. I believe it today. I believed it enough to where my body said, he's not gonna stop. And that's, I took all the negative things, I need to go to the hospital, this and that, and I used it all. Who the hell could even get on that chair? You did. Who the hell would even think about taping stretch fractures up? You did. All those things I used for motivation. So if you think that I'm some unhappy guy, you're wrong. Having lived the life I've lived and seeing the other side, not being afraid to attack what was in front of me has made me happy. Say that again. In fact, let me make sure I understood it. Getting to the point where you're not afraid to face the thing on the other side of the door that wants to attack you has made you happy. Right. What the dark side is, is we all have a cookie jar and we all have a jar of fuck where shit just it just ain't going right and in hell week what they do in hell week because this is where i really went to the dark side what they do in hell week is they design hell week to find your flaws and they do a really good job of that it's 130 hours of continuous training you may get two hours of sleep and they beat the shit out of you and find everything wrong with your mentality and then they start hell week and that's the beauty of it and for me i'm not some not you know nasty guy giving guy you know I, I don't have a great bit of talent in anything so what got me through horrible times was the dark side was i created my name is david goggins i created goggins goggins is the guy that can take anything you put in front of them. You wanna break my motherfucking legs? So be it. I have a way of going to a place like I did in that race where all the pain and suffering that they put on top of me in Hell Week, I will reverse that pain and suffering and I will take your soul. So every instructor that put me through buds, my job, what drove me was I wanted you to go home that night after you beat the living shit out of me and I smiled in your face. I wanted you to feel worse than I did and you were going home to a nice warm bed with your wife or your kids and a, a nice meal and I was still out there in the grip, suffering for another 100 hours. I wanted you to think about me knowing that I'm comfortable being very unfucking comfortable And I want you to think about when you went through fucking hell week, how uncomfortable you were and how bad you wanted to quit, knowing I'm not thinking that fucking way. So the dark side is something that I've designed. It's an evil place I can go that very few things can hurt me. I use the hurt you're trying to put on me. I flip it upside down and use it. You trying to use it for kryptonite? No. It's power pillars for me. I'm, I'm using it for strength. I just flip negative into positive. That's all it is. People I said, man, you cuss all the fucking time. Why? <laughs> well, I hate to say it, the best way for me to get how I feel across, I can't sit here and say, you know what? Yeah, I went through Hell Week and man, it was it was really hard. <laughs> no, that motherfucker takes your damn soul, rips it inside out, and then they say, now we're going to fucking start. It it, it allows me to express right. where I was at at a point of my life. If I don't give you all of me, why the hell am I here? Why, how will you learn from me 
People take so much offense to me. You will never learn from people if we always tap dance around the truth by finding the right words so I don't hurt you because you have thin skin. No. Tighten up, people. It's okay. Trust me. It's okay. You might be called nigger one day. It's okay. You might be called some Jewish word or some faggot or gay word. It's okay. Let them call you that. What are you going to do now? They don't own your life. How are you going to control that now? How are you going to flip it upside down and say, Roger that, now I'm going to harness this shit and you'll read about me years from now? How? That's the question. How are you going to do that? Thicken your skin. Become more of a human being. Don't be afraid of the reflection in the mirror. Because that's all you can be afraid of. Once you overcome the reflection in the mirror, you've done it. The, the younger generation quits not everybody. So I gotta, I gotta put that, people get their butt hurt. So not everybody. Most of this generation quits the second they get talked to. You did this wrong, you did this wrong, or, or they get yelled at. It's so easy to, you know, to, to be great nowadays, because everybody else is, most people are, are weak. This, this is a softened generation. So if you have any mental toughness, any, any ability, if you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it. People have a, a, a hard thing to understand. I hate to run. And, and, and what makes me so crazy, it doesn't need more, people go, well, 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 why do you run if you hate it? What are you talking about? I don't want to take showers and eat either. I hate that too. The, the whole, the, that's life, man. That, and and, and, and it, it wasn't until I changed that mentality that I became somebody. I hated going to school, so guess what? I was dumb as shit. That's what, it, one plus one is two. But if you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. That's what people understand. By me running, I am callous in my mind. I'm not training for a race. I'm training for life. I'm training for the time when I get that two o'clock in the morning call that my mom is dead or something happens tragic in life. I don't fall apart. I'm training my mind and my body and my spirit so it's all one so I can handle what life is going to throw at me because the life I've lived, it throws a whole bunch at you. And if you're not physically and mentally prepared for that, you're just going to crumble and you're good for nobody. When you are on one side of the door, and your mind is racing because on the other side of that door, it could be no one. It could be four guys with four AK-47s. That, that door you're about to open could be booby-trapped. So once you open it, boom, your legs are gone. So there's a thousand things you think about when you're the first guy, second guy, third guy, getting ready to go in a room and flood it. You must be that person on that door, get ready to open it, thinking to yourself, if I die, so be it. The only way you can go in that door is knowing there's a great chance you're gonna die. I hated jumping out of airplanes. I hated shooting guns. I hated the job as a Navy SEAL. But I did it because I wanted to change myself. So my whole thing is if you're gonna choose to open that fucking door in Iraq or Afghanistan, open the motherfucker and go in hard. Because they're gonna remember you by slowly opening it and peeking in. So if you're gonna open it, and you made the mind to open it, don't crack it open. Open the fucking door, go in. That's with life. If you're choosing to do, if you're choosing to do something, attack it. Because they're gonna remember you as not attacking it. So I want to be remembered. You can hate me, but there's one thing you can't say about me. I didn't attack it. No matter what avenue I choose, I want to be the very best. And the very best may not be I'm number one. The very best is did I leave everything inside of me out there? So attacking is not like, oh, I want to win this or win that or be the best. The best is I'm, I'm, I'm running against myself and everything I do. And, and, that's, and that's what I attack. I attack myself. I'm always questioning myself. I'm always holding myself accountable. The accountability mirror is something that I kind of came up with in high school. Like I said, I started shaving my head when I was 16, and I got caught up in trying to impress so many people because no one liked me. 
So I developed so many different identities. Let me sag my pants. You know, let me, okay, let me pull my pants up. Let me, let me talk this way or act this way or be this way or, or whatever the hell it may be. God, God, there's so many different things I did to try to fit in with so many different groups that when you look in the mirror, that's the one person you can't lie to. So every morning I would shave my head thinking, God, I would reflect back on some of the lies I may have told somebody or some of the ways I acted that I didn't feel comfortable doing. And I did it to impress other normal people. The key word there is normal, everyday people. I was trying to make other people like me. How pathetic is that? So I, th this mirror would always tell me, my, 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 my reflection would say, God, you are a pathetic man. How does that feel every day to be this way? So I would just start having myself accountable. How, how did I attack today? How did I attack yesterday? And if I didn't do something I was proud of, I write down a sticky note and I would fix it. So then my senior year in high school, it was a totally different David God. I, you know, I wanted to sit the cool guy lunch table, man. I wanted, you know, even though everybody was calling me a nigga all the time, I wanted to, to try to act like somebody I wasn't so I could fit in. And I sold my soul to the devil, you know, trying to act like, you know, I'm, I'm David fucking God. That's who I am. And so I wrote down on a piece of paper, fuck the table, sit by your fucking self. And that's what I did, and guess what happened? My table became a table people started sitting at. One movie I watched all the time was Rocky. Great choice. Rocky won. And I related to Rocky a lot because of, uh, kind of, you know, one of the smart guy, just tried real hard. And the one scene that I related a lot of my life to, to this day was Rocky won round 14 and this is where I got taken souls from if you look at round 14 of Rocky one Apollo is beating the shit out of Rocky Rocky falls down in this corner Mickey saying stay down stay down Rocky didn't hear a fucking soul Apollo after he knocked him down turns around hands in the air like I finally knocked down this animal Apollo doesn't know it, but Rocky is getting up. Apollo turns around the second Rocky gets up. And Apollo looks at Rocky, and he, Apollo looks at him with a look of like Rocky just took his soul. He, he, Apollo shakes his head, and Rocky has his gloves and emotions towards Apollo. Come on, motherfucker, I'm still here. So the image in my mind of a man was not one that had earrings, saggy pants. I, I, I had this image in my head and I was going to fulfill that. And I, I didn't do any trends. I stopped trending. I stopped being this guy who whatever was new, fuck it, that's not what I believe in. I'm doing this. This is what I want to be. This is what I'm going to be. When I was out, I had time to reflect on all I had accomplished. And that was the first time in my life where I sat back and said, wow. Because only I, I may be telling you some of the story, I know the exact truth of how brutal my life was and how I shouldn't be on this show today and how the mind and how beautiful it is. So what brings me joy and happiness is knowing how beautiful the mind is and I'm one of the few people that didn't read about it didn't experience it through some, some drug. I got to experience the beauty of true fucking willpower. True, fuck you, I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna fucking fail, I'm gonna fucking fail, I'm gonna fucking fail, and I will succeed. Just me talking about that gives me a feeling, I know what I did, and I don't need to travel somewhere or to have this or have that. I have it all here in my mind. The beauty is remembering this young, dumb, what people call nigger, is now where I'm at today. And that is, when you finally get to that point for me, it's forever lasting peace. I, do need, I, I could die right now on this show, and I'll be happy, man. So, that's, 
that's my happiness is, is, is my reflection on the suffering of my journey, knowing I never quit, nor was I guided by anybody on this earth. I was guided by something much more powerful, and I listened, and I chose the path of most resistance. Talent not required. I don't judge people, I don't criticize you. You wanna be a douchebag and be an ass and not love this country, do whatever you wanna do? I don't care, man. I fought for this country for you to do you. And I am all about you doing you because I'm going to fucking do me. And I'm going to do me until I'm fucking dead. Who are you? At the core of your soul. And if he can, can't answer that question, our conversation's over. Because I can't say shit to him. Right. If you don't know who you are, if you don't know who you are, I can't tell you who you are. Hopefully, I can help people that believe that they're much less than what they truly are. Help them find greatness in themselves. And greatness isn't running 200 miles at a time or doing 4,000 pull-ups or being a SEAL. Greatness is whatever the hell you dreamed of in your own mind. You gotta first see it. You gotta first create this vision in your mind. And then that's when I come into play. Once you create this vision in your mind, it's how am I gonna get there now? It's the, the vision created is inside of you. So until you create that, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody to you. We're all, we, we are all great. No matter if, if you think you're dumb, no matter if you think you're fat, no matter if you are fat, no matter if you've been bullied, or no matter if you just got back from Iraq or Afghanistan and you have no legs or your arms or whatever, man, we all have greatness. It just, you gotta find the courage. You gotta find the courage to put your Bose headphones on and silence the noise out of this world and to find it and to find it because it's out there, but it's gonna take hard work, courage, self-discipline. It's gonna take all the non-cognitive skills. It's the non-cognitive skills that set you apart from everybody else. And, and that's what it's all about.